Hey, good morning. Hey, I'm Angela Straki. I am the author of Wisdom for Inspired Living.com. And uh, I am going to start uh, the video blog to go along with my um, website blogs that I've been doing for the last couple of years. And just to give you a little background, my heart and my passion is 100% revolved around Jesus Christ and sharing truth. Now, truth to me um, is the scripture and God's word. Um, now, I also like to say that through my experiences of living um, with Christ, um, there's also my personal perspective. Now, that's not absolute truth. That is just how I see things through my own experiences um, with walking through Christ. So um, what I'd really love that you take out of this is honest, just goodness uh, scripture. Um, so the scripture is going to be the meat of my blog as well as the meat of um, my videos. Um, so that is what really my passion is, is just to get you hungry um, for God's word, and that would be absolute truth. Now, along with that, I call I, I do what's called coffee cup counseling, and basically that's just my way of interacting with you, so we can share stories um, about our walk with Christ. Um, just it's a way for us to interact and enjoy one another. Um, maybe just share stories and testimonies, um, or touch other people. So I hope you enjoy. Um, thank you for watching and uh, and I hope that uh, I hope that God's word is is seated in your heart. So um, today is uh, November 9th, 2017 and my discussion today is really revolving around um, planting seeds and seeds to me again are truth and truth again is scripture, God's word. Um, anything other than that is just really our perspective and our um, our experiences that we see personally, each one of us through our own lenses. That's why we have conflicting, um, maybe um, perspectives once in a while because we see things through our vision. Um, but but when we look through God's vision, we're just seeing His truth, His word, and we're seeing His answers, which ultimately is what we should all long for. So um, I'd really love today that we just memorize the scripture, First Peter. Um, chapter 2, verse 23, um, it says, When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. So, last night at Bible study, we discussed several topics as led by the Holy Spirit or our own um, internal questions about being mature in Christ. Um, many times we reflect on how to approach believers and non-believers that are stuck in sin, and many times perspectives. When it comes to how to handle this, um, there's a lot of different perspectives. The obvious answer is to approach people in a loving Christian way as led by the Holy Spirit. Um, but then you have the question, how do I know I'm truly being led by the Holy Spirit? Um, it's an ongoing question that will probably never evolve to a perfected answer during our time here on earth. But here's my thought. When Jesus came, he came to bring truth. Why? Because we all have our own religions and habits and doctrines of how we personally want to see and control our part in life. Jesus came then in the flesh and now in the spirit to scramble up our worldly thoughts. What was the reaction of the people in the Bible when Jesus scrambled their religious theology? Rejection. Um, interesting. What happens when you speak truth to those that are stuck in sin? Rejection. Um, so we try the, the many creative ways to somehow present truth in a most loving, non-judgmental, most perfect Christian way. Because after all, if we do it wrong, we're going to be rejected. So many of us clam up and don't share it at all for fear that we might get it wrong. Um, well, here's my thoughts on that. The only thing that can take away sin is Jesus. We know this. We know that the Bible tells us that the only way to be forgiven or to receive salvation is by our acceptance and obedience to Jesus Christ. Now, this is not a one-time thing. This is a daily thing that we must constantly keep on our forefront focus, lest we forget what Jesus really looks like. We should be continually growing. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I really do prefer to have someone who loves me enough to speak truth in my life, even when it hurts. But let me share with you what happens even after the hissing and 
spitting and rejection of those that you share truth with. When a sower, you and me, sows a seed, which is God's word, in the ground, which is our lives, it is dead, as is our immediate understanding of scripture. Now, you may not see a single thing happen from planting that seed of truth. You might see quite the opposite happen. However, after some time, if it is planted and watered and provided sunlight and care, it does begin to grow. And when it grows, it is not instantaneously a plant. It takes time to grow. Now, God is the one that takes care of the hard part of the process of growing and developing us. So we're off the hook. Our part is simply to speak his truth. This is not our opinion or our perspective. It's not our um, personal insight or our gifted wisdom, but instead scripture, which is, like I said, the only absolute truth. Know that there is no better act of love than to restore a brother, um, a, a brother or sister caught in sin. Those who are caught in sin may not enjoy truth. truth. You might be treated like Jesus was. You might even be rejected. But God's absolute truth is what sets captives free. Now, you don't have to add to that. It's complete all on its own. People are a lot more interested in Jesus than we give them credit for. Even the maniac of Gardaria came running out to meet Jesus, no matter how many legions of demons tried to stop him. So share away. Speak truth. Set the captives free. So now I just want to have you um, input your thoughts. I've, I've got a section there that you can go ahead and journal. Um, use this section for however this is speaking to you, that scripture, the scripture, how the scripture is speaking to you, not my perspective or thoughts, but you're certainly welcome to, um, to share your opinions and your perspectives about my opinions and my perspectives. Um, that's what discussion is, um, and that's how we learn. Iron sharpens iron. Um, Christians sharpen Christians, and we should all be accountable to one another. So um, feel free to use that space in the, in the meditation and the discussion to go ahead and journal your thoughts on the scripture. Um, like I said, you're more than welcome to share your insight, your testimony, your thoughts, questions with me below, um, or keep it for your own personal journey. Um, and you're, you can journal. Just print it out. So the next step that I'd like you to do is um, the studies indicate that if we share what we've learned with someone else within the next 24 hours of you reading or listening to this blog um, or from you being taught scripture um, and then your interaction with that, once you take that and you share it with somebody else within the next 24 hours, um, the chances of it being embedded in your mind, in your memory, in your heart, um, the, the chances of those scriptures um, meditating on them and releasing them gives you potential for them to grow. Um, so that's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Um, if you have a friend or a relative or anyone that comes to mind while I read you this blog, please share it with them. Um, you can text it. You can post it to social media. You can discuss it at your Bible study in your homes or in your churches. You can watch it on my YouTube channel. Um, or you can print it out print out the blog, and then just invite a friend to have coffee and discuss, or take me along on YouTube and discuss there. So um, just decide right now who you're going to share this blog with or this video with, and then um, and just jot down you know, your own notes of why you thought of them and, and, and how this might, um, the word, the scripture, might relate to them and maybe release them from some bondages or questions that they might have. And so again, don't forget to memorize and meditate on today's word. Not my personal coffee cup counseling, um, but scripture, because that's really what we're focused on. It's absolute truth. So scripture memorization, again, 1 Peter 2, um, chapter 2, verse 23. Um, I read out of the NIV sometimes. Sometimes I pick a different one, but uh, that's what we've got today. And it says, when they hurled their insults at him, that's Jesus. He did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Have a good day. 
Thank you again. I look forward to uh, visiting with you again tomorrow with my thoughts. See you then.